Well, if I may get your attention, thank you so much for joining us again for uh, another very special Palestine Center presentation here at the Leadership Academy. And I've got to hand it to Mandy for this one especially because Mandy organizes so much of the schedule at the Hallenstein Center when we have our speakers come in. And of course she arranged Father Sirico to come in during Holy Week, which is perfect, which means we're going to have confession in 15 minutes, right? <laughs> really pleased that Father Sirico has been able to join us in this ongoing series of leaders. One of the reasons that I wanted to have Father Sirico join us is that he has been a leader in a number of areas. He's an ideas guy. He's a leader in the realm of ideas, which may be one of the most important things that we need in this day and age. When so many words are so, we were just talking about the Niagara of words that are spoken that don't necessarily add up to uh, sensible policy or, or, or prudent decision making. He's an ideas leader. He's a spiritual mentor. And he's an institution builder. <clears throat> he helped found the Acton Institute just a few blocks from here, and it's made an enormous impact. Here's his background. You know, he uh, has a master's in divinity from Catholic University of America, but when he was an undergraduate studying at USC, we'll forgive you for that, USC, and we have some Notre Dame people in here. Looking better every day compared <laughs> to Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> there we go. Okay, Brian, you've met your challenge. We do have some domers in the room. But uh, he studied at the University of London, and he was aware early on in his education that there needed to be a greater emphasis on personal freedom, the dignity of the human person, awareness of that in the policy-making process. Too often it is lost sight of and also an appreciation of our traditions that give rise to ordered freedom, what Russell Kirk would call ordered freedom in soul and in society. So Father Sirico was able to bring these together by 1990 when he founded the Acton Institute. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with some of our speakers, Rufus Spears, who comes and speaks at, at the Hound Science Center, uh, is one of the experts on Lord Acton, so we have a little bit of a connection they're going as well. And if you've heard Rufus, then you know that orientation to life. As president of the Acton Institute, uh, Father Sirico has been lecturing at colleges and universities and business organizations throughout the US and abroad. He has quite, quite the travel schedule. He's got all these Rosetta Stone uh, language courses from, I think, all over the world. Also, if you have followed his writings, he is prolific. You'll see his writings in the Wall Street Journal and other major publications in which he weighs in the debates of the day, bringing a perspective that combines the spiritual, the human dignity of the person with a public policy orientation that's very, very much concerned with ordered freedom. You've also seen him on TV, I'm sure, if you've been watching the 24-7 cable news channels. I first met you, I think, in 1994 when you were serving on the Michigan Civil Rights Commission. And I was working for Governor Engler in those days, and uh, that's where we met. And I heard you speak for the first time there, and I was uh, very impressed then. And I know you will be impressed now with what Father Sirico has to say. Please join me in welcoming Father Sirico. I just want to make sure I don't like to. You know, you put a preacher up here and it can go on <laughs> forever. I only have one talk. If I were to give it all at once, it would last about 30 hours. So usually what I do is pull pieces out. And uh, you know, when, you, when you're used to speaking on different things, you, you kind of have little formulations. I've watched this as a student of rhetoric. I've always loved rhetoric when I was a kid, uh, even uh, going to uh, different churches. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, in an Italian family. But very early on, I would go to different churches, and I loved the Pentecostal churches, uh, not just for the music, but uh, also for their great preaching. And, uh, and then, of course, later on with uh, regard to politics and stuff, and it's always dangerous uh, for a, uh, uh, a speaker, you know, who, who's used to speaking and, and forgets that you're not giving this uh, three-hour discourse. So how about if I do this? Uh, I don't know what your time frame is, but I'll speak for about 20 minutes. And then uh, we can, really what I'm interested is, uh, uh, is in the conversation. I also need to say right at the outset how honored I am to be uh, participating in an event at the Howenstein 
center because of my very high regard uh, for Ralph Hallenstein. Uh, he and his wife have been friends for as, just about as long as I've been uh, in uh, Grand Rapids. And um, I don't know if you've gotten to know him at all, uh, but always something new pops up when, you know, just a little thing, because he's a very discreet man, a very modest man. So you have to kind of drag out of him uh, these little events. And one of the things that I found so fascinating, you may not know this, maybe you do, uh, is that he was actually at the Second Vatican Council uh, in 1962 or 63. I, don't, I, I forgot which session he was at. But we were talking about his uh, remembrances of that for a Catholic that was a, the notable event in our lifetime at that time, other than the whole pontificate of John Paul II, but I digress. Uh, so to speak under the, uh, the banner of this center is a particular honor, and to speak on this topic uh, is a particular honor. So uh, I have put down seven characteristics which I want to speak with you about that go into leadership in general, and I'll reflect from my experience as a religious leader because that's the topic that I've been given. Uh, and these seven characteristics, I think, are essential and you'll see at the end that they're not just essential for leadership, but they're essential for life. Uh, and and this will um, become obvious. The, the first one I want to, um, and these are not in a kind of hierarchical order. I suppose that I could kind of break them down into what comes first, but I didn't do that. I'm choosing this first one because it's, I have a nice story that goes with it, which is what they tell you as a speaker is bring people in with a good story. Uh, and this has to do with integrity. One of the most essential characteristics of a leader is integrity. And um, the story that goes with integrity, I heard a number of years ago, and it's always stuck with me um, as speaking a real truth. It's a man who was going out on a <coughs> picnic with uh, a lady that he, he rather liked. And uh, they decided they were going to just pick up some uh, fried chicken at a shop uh, on their way out to a, a meadow and spread out a blanket and just sit and talk. And so uh, they stopped at the, the shop. They ordered two boxes of the chicken, you know, kind of the whole meal in there. And uh, they went out to the meadow and they put out the blanket and they put the boxes out and the drinks out. And, when the uh, lady opened the box, she looked at him, and he looked at her, and she looked at the box, and she said, look at this. And it was a box filled with money. All these tightly stacked bills that were wrapped. And he looked at it, and he realized that what they were holding in their hands was the deposit. And by the size of it, probably a whole week's worth of deposit for this little uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken stand. And so he said to his lady friend, why don't you just wait here, let me go back to the shop and uh, give them this money uh, and get our chicken. And so he, he went back down the road and he called the manager over and he showed him this and the manager turned white as goats and he said, we had no idea. The other, uh, I think I've just destroyed the microphone. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, I, I think I've just, uh, he said, I, we would have gone out of business if we didn't make this uh, deposit. Thank you so much for bringing it back. He said, well, I just need the chicken because I have somebody waiting for me. Well, no, 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 I, I have to thank you in some way. Of course, you won't pay for the chicken, but what can I do to, no, 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 it's, it's okay. I just, just want the chicken because I'm kind of, you know, on a date and... Want to go back? He said, no, no, no. You wait right here. I'm going to call the television station and the newspaper because you're such an example of an honest person. You could have gone away. We would have never known who had that. Let me just, he said, no, please don't do that. He said, no, I insist. He said, don't do it. The manager looked at him and said, what's the matter? You're a good example of a man of integrity. He said, please do not do that because the woman I am with is not my wife. Isn't that something? Well, a person can live a duplicious life. 